Hey guys, this is Mr. Gron, 7.4 Properties of Logarithms. In this video, we'll be expanding and condensing logarithms with the power property, as well as simplifying some logarithmic expressions using inverse properties. All right, so we'll start out with our power property, uh, which is that one. All right, so in this case, our condensed form and our expanded form aren't really, one isn't really bigger than the other. It's a little easier to tell which one is which in the product and the quotient properties. Uh, but in this case, uh, the condensed form, everything is in this part of the log. There's nothing on, in front of the log, right? There's nothing like outside of the log. So log base B of A raised to the P power, the expanded uh, version of that, when we expand something like this, what we do is we take that exponent and we move it in front. And uh, sometimes we call this plogging uh, because the exponent P moves in front and it says plog. Uh, so the expanded form, the exponent is in front times log base b, b of a with no exponent. Now where this comes from again is the product uh, or the power property of exponents. So this is very similar. It comes from the exact same spot as this where x squared cubed, what would you do with the 2 and the 3? You would multiply them, so it would be 2 times 3. The only difference really here is that we take you know, this outer exponent and then we multiply it out all the way in front of the log. Okay, so expanding and condensing the following, uh, something like this, all we have to do is take that y and is, which is the exponent and move it in front and then we're done. So this will be y times log base x of four. Um, condensing, we're going the opposite direction. Now we'll take this number out in front, four times natural log of x and we'll make it into the exponent. So this will be natural log of x to the eighth. All right, so some mixed examples. Uh, these are involving both the product and the quotient properties as well as the power properties. So how do we approach that? Uh, when we're condensing, we are condensing into one log. So it, it is going to be log base 5. And now everything is positive, so it's just going to be a product next to this. Um, I'll start with the x. There's no exponent that goes with the x, so that's fine. There's no exponent that goes with the y, so I'll just make it a y. And then now the, the log base 5 of z, there's a 4 out in front. So I'm going to take that 4 and make it the exponent of z in the condensed form. So x, y, z, and z becomes z to the fourth. All right, with this one, same idea. Now it's a quotient because there is a minus, so this is going to involve a fraction. So we can make this log base 6 of a fraction, the positive part, this log will go on top, and we will take that 2 and plug it over to the u and make it u squared. And then for the, uh, the, the v, right, that's going to go on the bottom because it's a minus 8 log v. That 8 is going to plug over to the exponent of v, so v to the eighth. All right, the next one's now expanding. Sometimes I like to do these in two steps. Um, you don't necessarily have to, but it can be helpful to do it that way. Uh, I've got two terms here, an x and a y, so this is going to split into two logs. Uh, the x to the sixth is going to be the positive one, and then it's going to be minus log base 5 of x to the fifth. Uh, now, after writing it in this form, it's partially expanded. The next thing I'm going to do is just take the exponents and plug them out in front. So that 6 is going to move in front, the 5 is going to move in front, and our final answer is going to be 6 log 5 of x minus 5 log 5 of y. That should be a y, not an x. All right, our next one. This isn't going to involve uh, any minuses. They're all going to be pluses. And uh, if you want, you can do this in one step. It's not that tough. Um, we're going to split it into three logs for the three terms x, y, and z. The first one will just be log x. 
And then we can kind of plug and do this at the same time, right? That two for the y is gonna move in front. And so that's gonna make this plus two log y. And then now I can plug the three for the z. I'll move that three in front and it will be plus three log z. All right, so the very last thing is the inverse properties. Um, and this is just sort of how things cancel with logarithms. So if you have something like this where it's log base b of b to the x, the log b and the b cancel out and it's just equal to x. It's literally saying what is the power that gets you from b to b to the x? Well, that must be the power of x. Uh, the inverse, sort of the inverse of that is over here, if you have b raised to the log base b of x, again, what happens is the b and the log base b cancel out and you're just left with x. It's literally saying raise b to the power that gets you from b to x, which would result in x. Now that's kind of tough to follow that logic. Um, what's easier to think about is just kind of how things cross out. So log base seven of seven cubed, we can cancel the log seven and the seven, and we are just left with three for our answer, the exponent. Uh, then the next one, 10 raised to the log, uh, to log 14. Remember that if log doesn't have a base, its base is 10 automatically. So 10 raised to the log base 10, those cancel out, and we are just left with the 14.